Hello guys, I should keep plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and welcome to my channel. First of all, sorry for not being as well dressed as usual, because I will do some exercises after editing the video, so I just didn't want to dress up again and redress and you know. Yeah, boy. But well, for today's video we have another CPU comparison. Basically, we're gonna have core count versus single core performance. We have Ryzen 7 1700, 8 core 16 threads, first generation Ryzen, versus Ryzen 5 2600X, 6 cores 12 threads, second generation Ryzen, versus the Ryzen 3 3100, 4 cores 8 threads, third generation Ryzen. I thought it was an interesting video to do because many people uh, are still having these kind of doubts. So basically, more cores or more single core performance? Which one should I get? for the price at, uh, at that moment. So imagine all the three cost the same. Which one do I get? That's why this video was made. The question is, can you guess which one will be faster and in which games? Well, let's just find that right after the sponsor of today's video. <laughs> Sponsoring today's video, we have our monthly sponsor, GVG Mall offering you a Windows 10 Pro serial key for only $17 and if you use my SKAG code you get 20% off lowering the price to $13. After the payment you'll receive the key in no time and you simply need to introduce it in your Windows settings and BAM! You have an activated system. So let's go to the benchmarks. It's all about humanity. Today we start with CSGO, where according to our ancestors having more FPS seems to usually mean better luck in life. In terms of FPS numbers we get some really interesting results. Overall, Ryzen 7 1700 is really behind when testing it at stock, but shows its true colors once overclocked to 3.9GHz. That's because its boost frequency algorithm is not as effective as in newer generations. Ryzen 3 3100 seems to be the winner here, really close to Ryzen 5 2600X, which I was expecting to fall behind Ryzen 3 3100 due to way lower IPC. But it seems like other variables like inner latencies also come into play. And the results. The second game is Far Cry New Dawn, that although it isn't CPU heavy, it is CPU dependent and will make the newest CPUs, even the newest CPUs, have averages below 120 FPS. In this case, not a single one of the three CPUs can actually push more than 95 average FPS in this benchmark. Which is sad. Obviously, the coding itself doesn't really help and the values could be easily ramped up by just using the X12 or Vulkan, for example, like in other Ubisoft games. But I guess we need to wait for Far Cry 6 for that. In terms of results, Ryzen 5 2600X takes the lead here, with a max of 91.7 average FPS when overclocked to 4.2 GHz, and also with the higher 1% low values of 66. 
although both Ryzen 7 1700 and Ryzen 3 3100 have close average results, with the overclocked Ryzen 7 1700 having higher 1% lows than the Ryzen 3 3100. The third game is Rainbow Six Siege using Vulkan API and high settings with 100% render scale. At 4K and around 160 average FPS, we get GPU bottlenecked, which is not bad at all. At 1440p and around 300 average FPS, we can still see some differences, but the biggest ones are indeed at 1080p when we're over that. It can be seen that the stock Ryzen 7 1700 can push more than 290 average FPS, but can actually surpass the stock Ryzen 5 2600X values once overclocked to 3.9 GHz. Those same results are once again surpassed by the Ryzen 5 2600X once we overclock it to 4.2 GHz, getting us, at 1080p, 341 average FPS compared to the 317 average FPS with the Ryzen 7 1700. Overall, the Ryzen 5 2600X gets the first place in this game, followed by the Ryzen 7 1700 and then the Ryzen 3 3100. Now we get Assassin's Creed Valhalla using the X12 and high settings. As you can see this game is very heavy, more than it should actually. And even while it does like more cores, it also likes more IPC and single core performance. We can see that even at 1080p we get the GPU bottleneck at around 120 average FPS, with the only difference being the 1% lows, which for my own surprise were better with Ryzen 3 3100. Which has only 4 cores 8 threads. Interesting. Now with Horizon Zero Dawn, this game is the exact opposite of AC Valhalla. While AC Valhalla seems to somehow prefer higher single core performance over core count, Horizon Zero Dawn shows us how it prefers core count over single core performance. At 1080p, Horizon 3 3100 is unable to push more than 120 average FPS, with 1% lows going as low as 79 FPS. On the other hand, Ryzen 7 1700 with fairly lower single core performance is the top performer here due to having 8 core 16 threads, and that is shown with over 140 average FPS with around 20 FPS more in the 1% lows comparing to Ryzen 3 3100, showing us how Ryzen 7 1700 will get us a way smoother experience in this game. Overall, any of the three CPUs can run this game pretty well, but more cores will grant you a smoother experience.
The last game with side-by-side -side comparisons is Need for Speed Heat. This game shouldn't be so heavy in terms of AI cars, considering how dumb they are. And of course, the overall physics and graphics of the game aren't that great. But well, it is still using the X11 and that alone says a lot. And well, being the game so horribly optimized and heavy on the CPU, I thought that Ryzen 3 3100 would completely be demolished by the other CPUs, but I was wrong. It seems that Need for Speed Heat also likes single-core performance, and for that same reason, Ryzen 3 3100 still manages to beat the overclocked Ryzen 7 1700 in averages and 1% lows. But will overall lose to Ryzen 5 2600X by a margin of 3 to 5 average FPS, which is not much at all actually. Anyway, let's move on. The last game of today is Civilization 6. This is a game that I'm really happy to bring into benchmarks since it always brings me interesting results. As you can see here, this game prefers score count over anything. The simple proof of that is that Ryzen 7 1700, even at stock, which overs around 3.2 GHz, can match the Ryzen 5 2600X overclocked results. And that with around 1 GHz less. Once we overclock it to 3.9 GHz, the results have a massive uplift of over 20 average FPS and almost 20 FPS in the 1% lows, making the 1% lows on the overclocked Ryzen 7 1700 higher than the averages on Ryzen 3 3100. Obviously, the same Ryzen 3 3100 suffers badly in this game due to having only 4 cores 8 threads, and it bottlenecks at around 130 average FPS which is not bad of course, but far behind what the other CPUs offer. The last benchmark is a synthetic one, done with Cinebench R15 and R20. The results, although with different values, are quite similar in terms of percentage. Ryzen 7 1700 gets a huge boost by getting overclocked to 3.9 GHz, being it in terms of single core or multi core performance, going from roughly equal to Ryzen 5 2600 in terms of multi core to completely demolishing it like it should from the beginning. Ryzen 5 2600, on the other hand, gets roughly the same single core performance when overclocked, with a decent boost in terms of multi core performance. Ryzen 3 3100 is the in-between scenario. It gets a decent boost in terms of multi-core like the 2600X, but also gets a boost in single-core performance unlike the previous. Basically, if you're looking for heavy stuff, Ryzen 7 1700 overclocked is still the way to go. Let's go to the conclusion. So guys, concluding. Basically, um, th this video was really interesting in my opinion, I really enjoyed doing it and I really enjoyed the, the results mostly because we have uh, many kinds of results. So, basically for gaming, in some lighter titles, maybe some older titles, some esports titles, Ryzen 3 3100 is indeed the best, with Ryzen 5 2600X being the best all-rounder. But... The Ryzen 7 1700, once overclocked, really surprised me. The older Ryzen 7 1700 can really compete with Ryzen 5 2600X uh, and the Ryzen 3 3100, in some cases, really um, getting a win from them, uh, which is really, really great for the, the first generation Ryzen 7 1700. So it is the lower end first generation Ryzen 7. You have the 1700X and you have the 1800X. So, um, pretty good results in my opinion, pretty damn great. And this in general gaming, of course, if you're aiming for really um, CPU heavy titles, Ryzen 7 1700 may end up uh, winning from both of these CPUs, both of these two CPUs, Ryzen 5 and Ryzen 3, due to having more cores, more cache and so on, and also in multi-threading apps. So if you're using multi-threading apps, rendering, encoding, decoding and so on, Ryzen 7 1700 will definitely help a lot.
Other thing to take in consideration is the power draw and the temperatures. Obviously, the power draw of the Ryzen 7 1700WN in 100% usage will be a bit more than the others, will be around 170 watts full power, while the Ryzen 5 2600X will be around 120, 140 watts, and the Ryzen 3 3100 will be around like 60 watts, 60, 70 watts, even overclock. But if you do not care about power consumption, I would just pick the Ryzen 5 2600X and for multi-threading the Ryzen 7 1700 because I think that they are still a better overall CPU than the Ryzen 3 3100 and because 4 cores 8 threads are really low end now and people shouldn't be getting low end CPUs right now just get at least a mid-tier CPU um, and you'll be good to go and that's all for today's video guys don't forget hit like, subscribe and share this video because that really helps a lot and see you in the next one, possibly about the new AMD Adrenaline drivers. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next video.